In this video, I'll be introducing some general concepts about systematic sampling. For more details, you should be reading chapter 4 of the textbook by Levy and Lemshaw. So, in systematic sampling, as the name indicates, individuals are sequentially sampled from the population. So, for example, if we have the population indicated above, uh, we can select every third individual starting in, in individual number two. So, it would be number two, then number five, individual eight, and so on. And we would obtain our systematic sample in this case of size 7. An important concept associated with systematic sample is the sampling interval. And sampling interval is just the period uh, on which we sample the individuals. And it's given by the sample size of the population, capital N, divided by small n, the sample size. In this case, if we have the population is 21, as indicated in the figure, and we want a sample of size 7, our sampling interval is 3. So the sampling procedure would be to select a random number between 1 and 3, and this would give us the first individual to be sampled. So in the previous example, this would be individual number 2, would be our uh, first random individual between 1 and 3, and then we would sample every third individual because sample interval is 3. If the sample interval would be, for example, 4, we would be sampling every fourth individual. Now, if the sampling interval is an uh, integer, as in the previous case, the sampling probabilities can be shown to be exactly the same for each individual. So, in fact, we'd be in a situation similar to the simple random sample, and the uh, estimator that we've seen for the mean, the, the total and proportion would apply to the uh, systematic sample. If the sampling interval is not an integer, uh, the previous formulas will have a small bias because each individual will have a slightly different probability of being selected for the sample. However, in practice, this bias can be uh, rather small. And in fact, if the population is large, then the bias is going to be negligible. So the estimators for the mean, the sum, and the proportion uh, that we've used for the simple random sample can also be applied to the systematic sample. And these estimators are going to be unbiased or uh, will have a very small bias, as uh, discussed uh, before. But in the case of the standard errors, the usual uh, estimators for the standard errors will only be unbiased if there is no order or no monotonicity in the population. In those cases, uh, the estimators will be valid as standard error. An example of monotonicity in the population would be the case of serving uh, patients admitted to uh, an hospital where there's clearly a dependence on the day of the admission, at least weekends versus weekdays. And this pattern would have an impact on the way we calculate the variability of the estimators expressed in the standard errors. So typically, if the population is ordered, the standard error of estimates computed from samples drawn in a systematic way from this population is going to have a smaller standard error than the random uh, sampling scheme. And to understand uh, intuitively why is that, let's remember what the standard error is. The standard error is just the standard deviation of estimates computed across different samples from the, of the population. So if we start with this population and let's imagine that we draw uh, one first sample selecting the first individual and then sampling every third. So I'm going to sample the first individual then the, the third and so on. Let's do another sample but now let's start in individual um, two this is going to be my second sample. The third sample starting in visual three and so on. You could do this several times. But if you look at the samples that are generated from this population, uh, and if you think, for example, about means of a certain variable, you can see that these samples are all very similar. So they are going to produce very similar estimates, which means that the variability across estimates from different samples are going to be, to, to be very similar. And this, this, is, this does not happen in uh, the simple random sampling. 
Now, if the population is monotonous, the opposite is going to happen. So the standard error in this situation is going to be larger than uh, the standard error computed from a simple random sampling. And again, if uh, we look at this population and samples that can be drawn from this population, um, let's start again in first individual and sample every third individual. So first, it's going to be the fourth, seventh, and so on. You get sample one. If you start at a different point, you have sample number two. And again, at a different point, you'll have sample number three. And now if you look at the variability uh, within sample, there's very low variability. So when you compute an estimate from sample one, however, it's going to be very different from the, the estimate. Let's think about the mean again, the mean from sample two and the mean from sample three. So although we have very uh, low variability within sample, you have high variability between samples and it's going to translate in a high variability and the estimates that you produce from the different samples which leads to a high uh, standard error. Another way of seeing it is think about the real situation where we do have only one, one single sample um, and the, the common way of computing the standard error is to use the standard deviation of the, the sample uh, and then divided by the square root of n and add the finite uh, population correction term. But if you look at the variability uh, of this sample, the standard deviation is going to be very low, and this would produce a very low standard error, which, um, which would be wrong because I just gave you the intuition that the variability across estimates, which is in fact the standard error, is going to be large. More technically, what is happening is the fact that when the, the usual formula for the standard error using the standard deviation of the population assumes that there is no no order or no monotonicity in the population okay otherwise you're producing some inter cluster inter sample correlation on the estimates and um, and this violates one of the uh, assumptions of the central limit theorem so I gave you an intuition about why the standard error might be wrongly computed if we have a monotonous or ordered population. However, in practice, we will not know if the, the, the population is monotonous or uh, ordered unless it is done, done by design. So one way of dealing with this is to use a variation on the systematic sampling called repeated systematic sample. And as the name indicates, the idea is just to repeat several times the same process of a systematic sample. So let's consider an example of a population with size 40, and we want to select a sample of 20 subjects. Instead of doing a single systematic sample of 20 individuals, I'm going to select five systematic samples of four individuals each, and then combine everything at the end. So the idea is to select five uh, random starting points across the population and for each starting point I'll generate a, sam a sample of size 4 and this will give me uh, five subsamples at the end. So the sampling interval for each subsample is going to be 40 over 4. So each uh, starting point is going to be selected between 1 and 10. And once I have the initial uh, point selected, I'll sample every 10 uh, subjects in the population to get a sample of size 4. And I repeat this five times. So if I generate different initial points out of 10, so number 3rd, 9th, 8th, 10th, and the second individual will be my starting points. And so for the first sample, where I start at individual number three, I'm going to sample every 10th individual. So starting at number three, the 10th ten, ten individual after that, the 10th individual after that, and 10th individual after that. So for this first initial value, I get a sample of size four of these four individuals. Then I start at individual no number nine, select uh, every 10th individual, and then select start at individual A number 8, and so on. So at the end, I'll have, for example, if I'm interested in the mean, for each of these subsamples, 
corresponding to these five different initial uh, starting points, I'll have five means. And I can, can combine these five means by doing a grand mean of these five values. can also compute the variance of this, uh, this mean, which given by this formula that you can find it in the book. The derivation of the formula is based on the idea of these subsamples being clusters uh, of samples from a certain population. And we'll be looking at cluster example later uh, in, the, in the course. But for now, you can have just the, the, the basic understanding of what we're doing in s s repeated systematic sampling. So I'll briefly describe the example that uh, you have in the textbook, where the interest is to estimate the mean in total days uh, lost from work due to illness in a factory with 162 employees. And we'll be doing a repeated systematic sample to get 18 employees. We will have six starting points defining uh, the subsample or cluster, and you can compute uh, easily that the number of possible uh, subsamples that we can do out of 162 is 54 possible clusters. This is going to be important to define the weights, and you can find more details about this in the book. The file in the e-learning website, WLOSS, contains the records of the uh, 18 individuals. This is a SAS file, um, and if you look at the textbook, the construction for the data it's going to be slightly different instead of having the records for the 18 employees we'll have to enter in stata the, the estimates for each one of the clusters but here in sas we can actually treat this as uh, uh, just one sample where we have a variable cluster that in, it identifies in which sub samples or in which cluster the individual belongs to. So these are the third, the three first individuals for the first cluster. These are the, the other three, the next three individuals for the second cluster and so on. So we have six subsamples with a total of 18 individuals. And the variable x, y is the number of days lost by the respective employee. So here I give you the code for SAS just be sure to change the path of uh, the, the lib name and the options in proc sur survey means the sum will give you the total and the standard deviation for this total the mean is going to give you the mean of the of days loss and the cl sum and the cl mean will give you the confidence intervals for the sum and the mean respectively and we have to add this cluster that will basically tell SAS to deal with the inter-class correlation of the individuals. So you should obtain a mean, an average of 4.5 days lost per employee or, or a total of 729 days lost per individual in the respective confidence intervals.